All right, we're going live here. Let's see. Hopefully the thing is working. Let me know in the chat. You can should be able to see me uh, and hear me. Let me know you can do both of those. What's up, Aaron, Dean, Monopo, Benzi, Nate Kelms, Lawrence. Uh, if you came over from Instagram, hi. Uh, so this is, uh, I'm doing a mastering session. So instead of doing it all alone by myself, let's, uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Y'all can see in here. Okay, great. So let's, uh, let me close out some things, y'all. Let's close all the other tabs. Close, close you. Sorry, just give me a second. Getting my ducks in a row here. So I'm mastering an album uh, by the wonderfully talented uh, uh, Katie Callahan, produced by Gabe Roman, who is one of my one of my peeps. Um, I've I've mastered a couple singles for them, but they've they've moved on to uh, this uh, full on. Hang on, I gotta close this thing now. Uh, full on album. So I'm excited to get to master it. Uh, I won't be getting to all of it today, but a good chunk of it today. Give my ears a rest, come back tomorrow. Um, and I'll just kind of show you my workflow a little bit. I'm not gonna be able to answer tons of questions because I really have to get to work here, but let me pull up my, uh, get my screen situated so you can kind of see what's going down. Um, okay, cool. So now you should be able to see everything I can see. I'll put the put the chat over here on the side. Okay. So um, this is my setup. Loud and clear, y'all can hear us. Okay. Uh, I'm going to not look at the chat a whole lot because I need to get to work on this. So um, right now I'm using Studio One. Obviously I'm in the project page, project window, and I've got all the songs loaded in. Um, over here on the top left, uh, I've got the name of the album, Get It Right, the artist name here. I've got all the songs here loaded in, copied over. They're ready to go. The only thing, uh, other thing setup-wise that I do is I use K14 as my metering for mastering. So K20 is my mixing, K14 is my mastering. And literally what that means is I want my mastering to hang out around zero for the louder parts, I want it to get up here into the yellow. And then for the loudest parts, I want to get it into the red. If the whole thing is hanging in the red the whole time like this, I don't like that. I don't know if you can see the meter there. Um, I don't want it to be in the red all day, every day. That's too much volume. And that's kind of my rule of thumb. So the only plugin that absolutely I know will be here is this one. And this is the Pro L2 uh, limiter from FabFilter. So you can't hear anything yet because I've got it muted. But... Um, this is a great limiter. Um, it just works well. It sounds good. It can be, um, you can go too far with it. Because it does sound good, you can push things louder than you probably should, which will kill the dynamics. I tend to master more on the quiet side in the sense of I would really love to, uh, I don't, I don't want to go overly loud. I, want, I don't want to be too quiet to where you listen to it in your library and it's way quieter than everything else, but I also, I don't think it needs to be overly loud. Um, can you see the screen? Can you see the meters? Uh, you can't really see the meters with my face in the way, can you? I might remove my face if you think that'll help. Let me know. Um, I can also change the location of the meter perhaps, but um, if you want me to just remove my face, just say, hey Joe, remove your face please. Um, Check the chat here. Cool. I got some folks from Brazil, well, from Bali, Argentina, the UK. Nice. Got a good crew. I love it. Okay, okay, okay. So um, let me just kind of show you a lot of what I've learned about mastering. I learned from Ian Shepard. So if you don't know who Ian is, he runs Production Advice. Great website. He's from the UK. He's delightful. Uh, and he's got a course called the Home Mastering Masterclass, which is fabulous. He actually uses one of my songs in that class. Norway, New York, shrink your face. Yeah, I don't think I can. Uh, I know what I can do. Um, this I've got just the bare bones version of this software. Let me do this. See if that looks better. Okay, now you can see the meters. <laughs> it's not the best way to do it. I could also do it this way. Maybe that's a little bit better. 
We'll try that. Um, anyway, uh, just uh, everything is crazy. You go away. Um, yeah, that should work fine. You can still see the meters. Um, a little more engaging with my face. Okay, you can see the meters there. That'll work just fine. Okay, super. And I'll put the chat over here so I can see what y'all are saying. We can make this work. We can work it out. Uh, and just kind of yell at me if I ever cover something up with my face. But I will try my darndest not to do that too, too much. Sorry, I know I'm rambling. I'm trying to do a thousand things at once. Um, but welcome. This is a live stream of me uh, mastering a project for a client. Uh, again, the artists, can you do a transparent window of your face? That'd be nice. I cannot make my face go transparent. Um, let's see if that works a little bit better. Um, okay, so, so the way my workflow works when I'm doing mastering is the first step is just level. So if we just put this limiter... Um, actually, the first step is to figure out which version of this limiter I want to use. Um, it's got a bunch of different styles. So I'm going to actually start by pushing the volume up too much um, and seeing kind of which version of this I kind of like the sound of and then working from there. So if I hit play... So I'm just going to switch through the different styles and just see if one jumps out to me. I'll hang my sorry by the window. Please tell everyone here what I have done. Because I still... Okay, I played around with this earlier before starting the live stream. I think the modern one sounds kind of cool. It's subtle, um, but that's what I'm going to go with. So the what I'm going to do here is all these mixes, if you can just see the, the waveforms, they're all fairly consistently mixed, so not one is any crazy louder than the others. So I'm going to start by just adding, I think, 5 dB of gain to the limiter itself, and then I can adjust the overall gain of the individual tracks from that. But that should get us, if we're looking at our meters here, Here's to finding one worth closing, here's to breathing, here's to choking, here's to you. Gets the level up if we jump around. Level he whispers low. be a little too much let's go 4 db here then i can add a db or take away a db from the individual tracks if i want to as well yeah second monitor would come in handy you are not lying i don't have one i got this old ancient imac which i'm considering replacing or using my laptop with a bigger monitor but that just requires too many things i'm too lazy to or i just don't want to i don't want to transfer everything over um because it's working ish right now Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hone in on the first track. First tracks tend to be um, fairly important to the record. I'm going to spend more time on this probably. Um, no, what I'm going to do first is go through and just get levels. Just kind of get everything kind of hitting where the meters, so both the meters on this limiter and also right here are showing me the output level, average level of, of everything. So I'm going to go through and quickly by adjusting the fader on these individual tracks. Adjust the level so we got a decent level where the beginning is coming in, just where the green hits the yellow. It's very mathematical, it's very like not all that creative, um, but it just, it's just where, it's where I like to start. I like to be kind of technical in the way I start mastering. So, because mastering is a, one of the more technical things we do. It's still creative, but it's still fairly technical too. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to go to the loudest sections and just get it to where it's not over limiting and the volume looks pretty good. The volumes, the meters getting into the red, not clipping, but into the red of the K14 meter and kind of go from there.
that's the loudest part of the song, and it's just getting into the red. That feels pretty good. And it's a more folky sounding song in any way, so I don't want to go nuts with the limiting. And I'm just moving this fader right here. Um, you could put a mix tool plug in, which is what I've done in the past. Um, I like the fader because it's just right <laughs> it's just right there. Um, and this fader comes after all the plugins, just so you know. Um, but I don't really care at this point because I'm just adjusting the overall level of the track itself. Okay, here's the second song, loudest section. And all you left with is the chill of him to wonder how to scrape him off he only stays. One of the things I run into is quieter songs like this. If I use that same formula of just using the meters, making the loudest section just get into the red a little bit, then sometimes the quieter songs are the loudest ones on the record. So down the road, I'm going to go back and probably listen and pull this one back down, maybe if it ends up being louder than the louder songs, if that makes sense. As one we watch for a while and we say what a shame as the days and the years disappear. Fun fact, this is a song I've actually already mastered once, but we've redone it a little bit, so I get to master it again, which is fun. Wondering how to handle when I get there See that I was falling See that I was falling And I'm happy that Her voice is so pretty. I love that she goes up there. But tell the truth for both our sake, your smile is a So that one is very vocal heavy, and there's not a lot of, there's no drums or anything, so I pulled the, vo actually pulled the overall volume on that one down. Remember, I'm adding 4 dB at the, uh, at the limiter, because that just kind of seemed like average of, I'm going to need to add that much anyway. Now I'm adding and taking away little bits uh, here and there. Um, somebody asked, is this going to be on YouTube? Yeah, this will just show up as a YouTube video when I'm done. Yeah, with all your live chats will forever be embedded in that YouTube, which is fun. Okay, did that one. Again, this is just, this is meant to be quick. I'm just kind of getting just rough levels so then I can work on the individual songs. Because once we EQ and compress and if whatever we do, we're going to undo some of the levels that we set here. But I just want to be starting on kind of a level playing field, much like doing the static mix in a mixing session. For us and for Love that. Nope, nothing wrong with a ukulele song right in the middle. So hopefully you're starting to get just a little bit of what, what I'm doing here. This song is a little quieter than the rest. And it felt, when as soon as I started playing it, it felt too quiet. That's kind of what we're going for. We, don't want, we want every song to feel like it fits. So that one got turned up more than the rest, just because part of it's just by ear, the way I heard it. I'm going to say something about limiting in just a second, but real quick, let me finish these levels.
Very cool. Um, on that last one, I can hear there's a little extra low end that's hitting the limiter a little harder. So I'm going to need to take that out, and then I might be able to push the volume a little bit more. One thing to uh, Will Clifton. Is this Whitney Winkler? No. This is, um, look in the description below. Uh, there's a link to her Instagram. This is Katie Callahan. Um, I've not met Katie. Katie, if you're watching, hi. Um, but Gabe Roman uh, produced and mastered, or produced and mixed this, and Gabe's Gabe knows me through Home Studio Corner, and I've mastered a few things for him. For K Anyway, uh, you know how it is. It's all a relationship thing, but they graciously said, I said, hey, can I use your stuff on some content? Because it probably brings some value to other people. And they said, of course you can, which is wonderful. And if you're one of those people who says no, that's fine too. But thank you, Katie and Gabe. Um, I think Gabe might be here on the live stream. Anyway. Uh, okay. So one thing I wanted to talk about limiting real quick. One thing I used to do early on is I would determine how loud my song is by how much limiting was happening. So I would literally look right up here at where the limiter is saying how much limiting is happening. And I would turn the song up until like literally could do it without even listening until I saw a certain kind of arbitrary amount of limiting happening. So like that's eight DB, that's too much. So I would do it till there was like, I don't know how much it's limiting right there. And I would literally go off just looking at it. And then I would listen and say, this must be right. Um. I would argue that's a little too loud. You could see the, the K meter was in the red the whole time. I don't want to be that loud in the red. I don't want that much limiting happening. I didn't have any other standard to measure against, so I was just going off what was happening at the limiter, but that's a terrible place to do it because... Um, let me find my level again real quick. Hold on. Because some songs will need more limiting than others. Um, it's more about the overall volume, and that's where the K system is great, because I kind of just go for, I'm aiming for this. I don't want the song to be way down here for the first half of the song. I want it to at least get up over zero most of the time. And then up here when it turns yellow, that's where I want you know the meat and potatoes, the choruses of the song here, and then the kind of loudest parts just touching into the red. And what that ends up being for me is they don't get over limited. When I just pushed that one up really loud, it felt over limited. There was too much limiting. Her vocal started to sound heavily compressed because of the way I was limiting it. <laughs> Sorry, I've got this allergy thing today. Uh, but, 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 so is the idea to set mastering volume levels before you do final EQ? Yeah. Yeah. It's it, To me, honestly, my mastering approach, I hadn't really thought about it, but it's a lot like my mixing approach. Um, set levels then go add plugins as needed. And a lot of times when I'm adding plugins, the goal with the plugin is to have the volume stay exactly the same, right? Um, I, that's, that's, that's basic like plugins. I put a compressor on there. If I'm turning it down, then I need to turn the output of the compressor up so everything's the same volume before and after. It's really the only way to test this kind of stuff. Problem with, um, with mastering a lot of times is you're adding volume. So it gets tricky, but there's a couple ways you can fix that. One is by... Um, I'm not using a plugin to add gain. There's one, ma there's one limiter at the end of the chain, kind of the master fader version. And that's not, I'm not touching that for the rest of the session. It's staying put. Um, and then I've adjusted the volume levels using these faders of the individual channels. And then that's going to pretty much stay put. Then I can add plugins and try to just keep them to where they're not changing the volume of the track as I work on it. Another tool that I've used before is, uh, Ian Shepard, I mentioned before, has a plugin called, um, Perception which I've used, here it is. And Perception allows you, it, it listens to the before and after and exactly level matches it so you can hear what you're doing with your mastering. And that's usually helpful for later on when you've done some stuff and you want, you, you're not quite sure if you've helped or not because you've, one of the things mastering does is add volume and it's hard to bypass and actually get an accurate picture of what you've done and that's a tool that lets you do that um, but hopefully this setup I have which is a little different for me might not might make it where I don't have to use perception quite as much because most of the volume is happening on the limiter right here and then on the volume on the channel itself so let's go back to this first song which is called a toast and let's just do a little bit of listening see what we want to do and then kind of start making some changes uh, I don't use ozone I think it's great I just don't have it Okay, first we're just going to cut 
that big gap at the beginning. And there's a way in Studio One, they've, they've changed it. So I'm switching to headphones. These are my Sennheiser HD 280 Pros. I've had these for almost 10 years. They are starting, they're getting ragged. Um, but they don't, the room doesn't play into it. And since I'm mastering, I just want to be extra cautious. Um, so yeah, a couple of things. So the loudest thing in the mix is the um, the kick drum in the low end. So I want to start with just a little EQ, just to bring that down so maybe I can get a little more volume out of 
the overall track. Finding one worth closing, here's to breathing, here's to choking, here's to you. So I just did a high pass filter at 35 hertz and it actually... Finding one worth closing. The kick drum's now not even hitting the fab filter. Um, that's interesting. So now we can probably get a little more volume out of it. Finding one worth closing. Here's to breathing. Here's to choking. Here's to you. Now, I do agree her vocal is up front, and it's good. It's not, like, too loud. I'm going to see how multiband works here. Just to test. When her vocal is louder, then you can do some fun things with, with compression. I'm going to try multiband. So this is the way I set up multiband. It's just three bands from 0 to 160, 160 to 2.5K, 2.5K and above. And I treat it like a real normal compressor. Um, I don't adjust the individual bands. 100 millisecond attack and release. Um, that's all I learned from my buddy Ian Shepard. Just want to see what happens. Finding one worth closing here's to Okay, now I'm, I'm not going to walk and talk you through every step just because it, it would take forever. Um, but the multiband is cool. It's doing something kind of special. Um, it's kind of taming the vocal a little bit. It seemed to kind of just, I don't know, just listen to it as I turn it on and off. Right here. If you see it, go like this. That's off. That's on. Here's to you. Can I play the victim this time? Here. Feels pretty good to me. Um, feels like I don't use multiband all the time. I used to try to do it all the time, and it didn't make sense. But here, just 
times when her vocal comes out, it kind of tames the mids a little bit. Um, but then when she's not singing, it actually kind of warms up the mids a little bit, which is why I went into the EQ and pulled out just a tiny bit of the mids and then some upper mids where her kind of the nasal frequencies come out on the vocal, which is which is really common too. Um, but it's kind of cool. Um, and you could do a similar thing if you wanted to try like an actual like bus compressor, like because since the vocal's loud, the vocal would trigger the compressor. We could try that. Um, something like a uh, like an SSL style, like this. Let's just see what happens. Here's to you. Can I play the victim this time? Here's to this. And whatever's left to come. And here's to doors. Here's to finding one worth closing. Here's to breathing. Here's to choking. Here's to you. Here's to you. Can I play the victim this time? Here's pretty good to me. Um, somebody's asking what would I use? I've mastered many a project just using um, the stock limiter here in Studio One. Works fine. It's got true clip, soft clipping, K meters. It's got kind of all the things you want. I just couldn't push it quite as hard before it got crunchy, but it totally works. Um, literally, everything I've released up until Amen was that anything that I've mastered, like the, the one with Fighter... Um, all those EPs from that year were, um, were done through the regular limiter. So it's not inferior in, a, in any way that's not usable. Um, so kind of he, so, so that feels pretty good to me. Her vocal still kind of resonating in that upper mid range, which the multiband kind of brings out. But then I used a little bit of this EQ to bring it down. And then I went back to the EQ before there's something about this SSL that just makes the low end feel just a tiny bit, and you probably can't hear it over the stream um, for a lot of reasons, but it, it just, there's a little bit of a, not a boominess, it's just we, we took care of some of the boominess with this high-pass filter up here, and then there's just something about this, this compressor's almost doing nothing, but it just adds a little, I don't know, I like it.
Okay, so just there, I went back to the beginning. You can see the beginning of the song is quieter, and I felt like I could hear the multiband too much on this beginning part. Angel, how could you show yourself? So I listened there, and I could hear like the compression on the acoustic guitar. I didn't like that. Went and looked at the multiband, and I could see it was hitting pretty hard in the mid range. Um, so I just pulled the threshold up to where it's not hitting as hard here on this beginning part of the song. So I... Just barely touching her voice, and then we get to the louder part. So here's to you. Can I play the victim? That... Hitting it a little bit harder. So I kind of just basically backed off what I was doing with the multiband um, a little bit. I'm gonna pull it down just a smidge. Um, um, the room is way treated over here. You can't see it. Also, I'm on headphones, so it doesn't matter. Um, so here's to you. Can I play the victim this time? Here's to this. Case Music, hello. I now noticed you. And I like that you call me Senpai. So here's to you. Can I play the victim this time? Here's Um, level in my cans is pretty comfortable. It's not it's not super loud. I may bump it up loud just to hear, um, but I mean, it's just my comfortable listening level. Um, and somebody asked about how much limiting. I don't really look at that. I mentioned that earlier. I don't look at how much limiting is happening. If there's a lot of limiting happening, I pay attention just to make sure it's intentional, um, but I'm going more for the overall level. So I'm looking at this meter down here quite a bit. I want it to be over zero, but not hanging in the red forever. Um, say it's the same as the meters here. That's kind of what I'm looking at. And so early in the song, um, the kick drum was hitting the limiter a lot. Um, and I used a high pass filter to roll off just below like 30 Hertz and it helped it not hit the limiter as much, which is crazy. It doesn't seem like that would do anything, but it did. When you hear me clicking on and off all three of those plugins, I'm not doing a ton to it. I'm just just enhancing it here and there. I'm not trying to do major stuff. Occasionally, you know, when I master stuff, I will do some major stuff uh, because the mix needs it. But if it doesn't, like there, I felt like I'll probably come back and do more things on that song, but that felt pretty good. So I'm going to move on to the next song. Um, how much of the mastering session would you do on headphones versus studio monitors? Um... I may do a pass of this on the monitors, but then I always check it here, um, specifically mastering, because I just I just want to make sure I, I'm not hearing it crazy in my room. Okay, let's listen to this next one. Uh, Jeremy, it's three bands of multiband, zero to 160, 160 to 2.5K, and then 2.5K and above. Here we go.
Have some fun with this one, okay? Um, so this one, I feel like the vocal's a little too muddy. Um, but we got to be careful because if we just go in and EQ it, we might EQ too much out of the everything else. Let's try it. Let's just see. Maybe I'm wrong, but we'll see. Is black and gray. With a glint in his eye, he fixed his gaze. He said, "I'm not here in town." Maybe I'm wrong, that might actually, that might be the solution right there. Is black and gray. With a glint in his eye, he fixed his gaze. He said... Um, Andreas, uh, I just, I use uh, the K-System, K-14, to where, what's up, Wes? Uh, to where it's sitting in the greenish, yellowish, occasionally in the red. That's what I use. Um, mainly because I don't understand luffs and I'm, I've never been, my stuff's never been mastered too loud, so I'm, I'm kind of happy with where I am. Is black and gray With a glint in his eye He fixed his gaze He said I'm not here in town for long The night is young so this is what I love about mastering. So originally, I literally, I just said, we're going to have to go figure out a way to deal with just the vocal because we can't just EQ that frequency because it'll mess everything else up. So I was thinking about mid side, take the mid and EQ it, but leave the sides alone. Turns out that vocal, I'm at like 222 hertz. And if you listen, pretty much the only thing that stands out at that frequency is her voice. I mean, listen to it. I've got it, I mean, not super narrow, but just listen. It's black and with a glint in his eye, he fixed his gaze. Point being, we can pull that one down and not really affect the rest of the mix, which is just so fun and surprising. Is black and gray. With a glint in his eye, he fixed his gaze. He said, I'm not here in town. One problem is that low fixed his gaze. Um, it's low and it's beefier. I may not be able to fix that part. His gaze. But it does sound kind of dope. His gaze. I wonder if I can make this one just a little bit wider. His gaze. His gaze. His gaze. He said I'm not here. His gaze. Yeah, the problem with that, that frequency that's the same as kind of the resonant frequency of the snare drum so we may not be able to do that his gaze. he said I'm his gaze. he said I'm not here in town actually works um because the snare drum took a little bit of the ring out which I think is fine his gaze. he said I'm not here in town for long Yeah, it's still jumping out in Soundcast. I think you're right. Um, I don't have a dynamic EQ, but I'm using multiband. Uh, but in this instance, I'm going to set it up differently. So we're going to turn, uh, we're just going to use one band of it. Everything else is going to not do anything. So edit all, relative, turn those all the way up. Everything's set to one to one. I'm going to set this middle one to kind of that little range there in like the 150 to 200. Let's listen to it. <laughs> so 
So let's give it like a 30 millisecond attack and release. Let's make it, let's just make it like a two to one and let's just see what happens. Of course, let's listen to it actual. His games. He said I'm not here in town for long. Cool, so that's overdone, that's too much, but now we know it's kind of fixing the problem, so now we'll ease that threshold up. His games. He said I'm not here in town for long. The thing I don't want to do is lose the warmth of the vocal. His games. Where the devil he wore his black and gray. Where the devil he wore. Where the devil he wore his black. Where the devil. Okay, there's a little more vocal down below, so we're gonna pull this down. There's a whoop when she sings whoop, it gets caught there. Where the devil he wore his blood with a glint in his eye, he fixed his gaze. Where the devil he wore his, where the devil he wore his black and gray with a glint in his eye, he fixed his gaze. He said, I'm not here in town for long. The night is young, the wine is strong. Here's a fun thing um, when you're doing multiband like this. So as we can see, it's compressing this band pretty regularly. Where the devil he wore his black and gray. but we can actually increase the gain of this frequency band. So we kind of make up for what we're taking away. If we're taking away a little too much, uh, it just adds like that warmth without, when she sings, it gets turned down, but in between snare hits and her singing, we're turning it back up a little bit to keep the warmth that was there. Where the devil he wore his black and gray With a glint in his eye he fixed his gaze he said, I'm not here in town for long. It's kind of cool. Let's uh, let's bypass it a couple times, see if we're actually helping or not. Where the devil he wore, where the devil he wore his black and gray. Where the devil he wore his black and gray. Yeah, I like it. The first one, she said, well, there was a whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, yeah, these are HD 650s, by the way. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, I'm going to leave that alone because I've got, let's just, let's go to the rest of the song. Look to prove you're tough as anyone in anything. Weary of your broken heart. A little lower than that comes out on her vocal a lot. I think EQ will solve it without having to do multiband there. The valley is deeper in the dark. Should help warm up the mix a little bit too. And I want to put on what we had on the last one, the uh, 
the fat channel with just that little bit of compression on it. The valley is deeper in the dark. So you run to the devil, the sweet with the bitter, when the smoke clears, watch your step, reconsider, take a pill, take a leap. Okay, we still got a lot of that. Let's do that same high pass filter here. The valley. Where that kick drum, whatever comes in. Where the devil. The devil laughs and says you're good enough. All right, we're done. And all you left with is the chill of him to wonder how to scrape him off he only stays. start singing along with the song you know you're getting close that's what i just did i was singing harmony with her so um that feels pretty good so what did we do we we high pass filter a little bit of mid-range low mid a little bit of nasal we multi-banded that low mid even more which maybe we can take this one out a little bit get some of that warmth back then we use ssl that's just barely Now you could argue it got a little loud there when she was singing that last part. Watch the level meter here. The devil you lose what was taken, brush the night from your eyes. You must so I'm going to pull the volume of the overall track down just a smidge. The devil you lose what was taken, brush the night from your eyes. You must be mistaken, shake your head, find your pride, but nothing here will ever be the same. Sam Kanak, you get out of here. You are not welcome. <laughs> uh, I am using this meter set to K14. So I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not looking at the Luffs thing. I don't even know what Luffs are, to be honest. I just go to where K14 means the average level at zero is negative 14. And for mastering, that works well. If you're kind of hanging around here, gets in the yellow for the louder parts, and the red occasionally, that feels pretty good to me. That's what I'm doing. But yes, Sam, you can get out of here now. I'm completely kidding. Sam is one of the nicest guys ever. If you go to Winter Nam, look for Sam. <laughs> that rhymed. Um, he will introduce you to everyone. It's awesome. So you're tied to the devil. You lose what was taken. Brush the night from your eyes. You must be mistaken. Shake your head. Find your pride. But nothing here will ever be the same. So you're tied to the devil. You lose what was taken. Brush the night from your eyes. You must be Mistaken, shake your head, find your pride, but nothing here will ever be the same. So you're tied to the devil, you lose what was taken, brush the night from your eyes. You must be mistaken, shake your head, find your pride, but nothing here will ever be the same. Yeah, so we're just we're just going real, I mean tiny changes here. 
just to kind of shape the sound. So like these, these like Neve style EQs are great for just overall shaping, not for going in and finding specific frequencies like we did with the stock EQ here and then multiband that lower mid range. But this is, this is the process. It's, it's early on in my mastering career. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Um, I used to have this kind of, I would do something to the first song and I would copy it over to the second and force it to work. It's just not, it's just not good. Um, yeah, you want some consistency. Yeah, I copied over the fat channel because I like that. Um, but just the fact that you're doing it is going to make it feel pretty consistent. Um, but copying everything over just that, that's just, it caused actually more problems than it, than it helped. So now let's just check between the first song and the second song. Ever's love to come and here's the doors. Here's to hide away. They sound like they'd be on the same record. I'll do more of that once I've gone through all the songs. I'll hit play and just jump. Kind of make sure that overall volume doesn't feel crazy different and like the vocal level is fairly consistent throughout. Again, I'm not doing this. I'm not looking at a particular measurement. Um, a lot of it is like Sam said, I'm earballing it. And ultimate event lighting, <laughs> that's a great name. Uh, when you, he said, when you click, or she said, he or she said, when you click on the SSL, I hear a little bit of a lower mid-range bump. I think it made up for the multiband compressor. Must have added some harmonics. Yeah, I agree. There's something about it. It doesn't, to me, it doesn't make a lot of logical sense because I'll put the SSL on there and I won't even turn anything on. It will, like the meter, the, the needle might not even be moving. Um but there will be just be an extra kind of warmth there and it doesn't make it muddy and it's not an EQ boost. I used to think, oh, it's just an EQ boost, just boost some lows. It's different. It's like a, a saturation um, over, I don't know. I can't put a word on it, but we've all experienced it. A lot of us, at least. You, you seem to be processing problem in the lead vocal. Shouldn't that have been addressed in mixing? Well, sure. Anything you do in mastering, like if it's mixed perfectly, you don't do anything in mastering, but nothing is, it's almost never mixed perfectly. There's always going to be something. And so, yeah, I was focusing on the vocal there because I think that's what I could do. Um, the limiter is barely moving and it sounds good. Yeah. Now, it could be that I send this to um, to Katie and to Gabe. And Katie's the artist, by the way. Go follow her on Instagram. She's linked in the description down below. Um, and they may say, hey, bro, it's too quiet. And I'll say, okay. And I'll try to move it up without killing it. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm not as concerned at getting it as loud as possible. The big place where I look, so instead of looking to where the loudest parts of the song, um, to kind of decide if we've landed at a decent volume, I look at the quietest parts. And what I tend, what I found is, so like right here where we are in the song and then right over here, if those are falling way below zero, then it's a little too quiet still. So that's kissing zero at the intro. I'm okay with that. And then this quieter part towards the end is well above zero. So if it's been mixed well, which this has, um, there's no big, huge, huge, insurmountable changes in volume, then... I like it this way. Um, ultimate lighting event, event lighting, sorry. Um, no, I did not mix this. Uh, this is, I did um, do some critiques for Gabe as he was going through the mix process to catch a few things and to give him some feedback. Um, but this was mixed, produced by Gabriel Roman, um, who's awesome. Who found me through Home Studio Corner, which I think is just so fun. I haven't done a few songs now. That one feels too loud. Let's just pull it down a little bit. Yeah, I love Fab Filter Sam. This is one of those songs you can see from here. Can you see that? Sorry. From here to the end is pretty much one volume. So if that's going to be in red the whole time, I don't feel great about that. As he raises his glass to the That 
feels better. Face, maybe now I start over today. Pull it back just a smidge. Just a smidge, like a tenth of a decibel. Uh, Good night, Max. Over in Israel. You're up late, brother. Sleep tight. Artist sounds like Dar Williams. I don't know who that is. Uh, no. Uh, Andreas, <laughs> Studio One. To get the project mode, you have to be on Studio One Pro. Shadow Hills, no. I don't have any third-party plugins, literally, except for this fab filter. <laughs> so, uh, the answer is no. I just don't... I was at a client's down in Houston last week, and he had me install some plugins, and it, installing plugins is annoying. And then he wanted to... Yes, there's a Natalie Merchant vibe here. Um, but then he... Thank you, Jeremy. But then he wanted to... Uh, he was going to set it up on another computer, and the whole registration process for the second computer just made me think, I'm so glad I used like one third-party plugin on one computer, and I don't want more. So anyway, that's just me. All right, so this third song, this is one I've actually mastered before, so I'm familiar with the song. I don't know why this feels like it would just love some multiband. Let's just see. Let's just see. Nailed it. I'm just kidding. I kidding, guys. Guys, calm down. Guys. Hey, are you really thankful that I don't say guys all the time? Uh, you ever follow those people on YouTube? They're like, hey, guys. So, guys, today, guys, we're going to guys look guys at the guys, the mastering guys. I'm not talking about anyone specifically. What's up, Ben Holmes? Ken Beck? That multiband is just barely touching it, but it does something to the kick drum. The kick gets punchier. Um, and hang on, it needs that um, it needs that high pass filter. One thing about if you're mastering for someone, there are things you'll probably do consistently, like this little high pass at like 35 hertz. Yeah, that helps. Um, but this, look at the multiband. It's doing next to nothing, but it's helping a lot. So for the most part, this is what I like about multiband. If you get kind of a build up in the mids, right? Which is which is gonna happen because everything has mids, right? Everything has a fundamental frequency in those mid range. We're looking at from 160 up to 2.5K. So all instruments live there. Um, I mean, this is what it sounds like if we take those frequencies out. Right? And this is what they sound like by themselves. There's a lot of important information there. So even if it's a great mix, sometimes the mids are just a lot. And you could EQ them out, but it's not so much that I want them to be down permanently. I just want them, when they get a little too loud, to kind of smack them back down. You know, like a... It's whack-a-mole. I'm playing whack-a-mole with the mids. And so the mids go... And then come back up. I think my kids are home. Are my kids home? Come say hi. Kids are coming. They're home from school. Um, these are Sennheiser HD 280s. Um, but anyway, so playing whack-a-mole with the mids. So when the mids get a little too loud, whack it down. That's what it's doing here. So it's barely touching the lows. It's not touching the highs at all. And it's just whacking the mids down. What ends up happening is the lows... Come see me! Tell them to come here. I'm on camera, though. Hi! For real. We're streaming live. Can you say hi? Hi. What's your name? Lila. Lila. Can you say hi to all the people? Hi. Do <laughs> you have a good day? Yeah. Good. All right. I got to go back to work. Okay. Okay. Owen, oh, you'll come say hi? Yeah. They're all being shy. What about Maggie? Maggie, you come say hi? Aren't they cute? Okay. Um. So anyway, whack-a-mole is what I'm saying. This is Owen. Owen, you say, where are you? 
Don't sneak up on me like that. Look, they're all saying hi. Diddle, 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 diddle. And Johnny Lipsham's here. The whole, the gang's all here. Hi. What's up, John Wymore? Um, Maggie, you coming? Come say hi. Hi, 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 hi. This is Maggie. This is Lila. And that's, that's Owen. These are my, these are my spawn. Hey, who are you talking to? Who am I talking to? I'm talking to Case, Daniel, Breton, John, Ken, Andreas, Johnny, Martin, and Max. It's me. I All right, I have to go back to work now. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> oh yeah, and the keyboard's on. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta go. See ya. Love you. Can you shut the door? Thank you. Can you shut the door? Thank you. Um, Breton, you win best comment of the day award. Great looking kids must have a great looking mom. Hey, you didn't shut the door. She left it cracked. That's close enough. So anyway, we're moving next week, so I'm going to have lots of content around moving and setting up a new studio, and it's going to be great. But anyway, back to Whack-A-Mole. No more escape. It's been so many years since I've seen her face. Maybe now I'll start over to... Listen to how I'm not a big fan of doing stuff like automatic plugins that like automatically fix stuff, but that's one that kind of... It fixes several problems, like the kind of, the okay, let's rewind. I'm going to turn it off for a second. Listen to the mix for a second while I shut the door. Listen specifically to the low end, the kick drum, and then the mid-range, just kind of the overall kind of warm frequencies. No more escape. It's been so many years since I've seen her face. Maybe now I'll start over today. Sounds fine. Um, I should check my Facebook messages once in a while. You know, I went through a batch of not checking them, and then I think I just deleted a bunch. Oh, there you are. Are you Jay Bratton? No. Sam Kanak. Whoops, I missed one from you, buddy. Sorry. Man, I'm not... You have to send me another one. I don't see it. Sorry. I get lots of messages. Um, but you're here now. Anyway, um, so that mid-range is fine, but then listen to what happens to the kick and kind of the overall mids when I slap on this um, multiband. I'll start it with it off, and I'll turn it on. No more escape. It's been so many years since I've seen her face. Maybe now I'll start over today. As he looks at it just... I don't know. It's hard to explain. Kick felt like it had a little more punch to it. And then um, it felt like just everything in the mids kind of got tamed down a little bit. I love it. It doesn't work on every... What's up, Oink Oink in Hong Kong? It doesn't work on every mix. I used to try to put this on everything, and I made a lot of things worse. So now I just, when I hear something in the mid range, and I think that needs to be tamed, and I don't think EQ's the right answer, that thing comes out. No. Now let's go. We're going to do the one thing. We're going to take our fat channel and bring it over. It's got our SSL on there. Uh, clear out the EQ and just see what it sounds like. No more escape. It's been so many years since I've seen her face. Maybe now I'll start over today. As he looks at his face, raising triumph and failure, his face twisted up in disgust at his That is my, so I've, I've mentioned I've worked on this song before. Um, In surrender to the lies. That vocal line is money. Um, Katie, I don't know if you're even here listening, but uh, it just make, gives me like goosebumps. The In surrender to the lies. He says no. I don't 
think it needs it, but I'm going to check. I've done this in every other song so far where I've taken that upper mid-range and pulled it down just a smidge. Let me just check. Let me just check. Yeah, let's bring that one down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Have you ever seen somebody losing themselves through the scent of the night and the grace of the pavement? We watch for a while and we say what a shame as the days and the years disappear. Now, my suspicion is that I've, the little tweaks that I've done have brought the volume down a little bit to where, remember what I said earlier, if I go to this beginning part, is it going to be too quiet? Is it going to fall way below zero? I think it is. Let's find out. It's not bad, but let's go to the loudest part, see where our levels are. Yeah, you know what that means? That meter did not go into the red at all, which means we got a little room to move it up a little bit. I love it when I have some room to move it up. Here we go. Did you hear what it did to the snare drum? Something about that brought, I know it brought everything up, um, but something about that, let me, let me do it again. Listen to how the snare drum starts to pop out because it's hitting the limiter a little bit. Man, sorry, I just talked and I was muted. I just went to check to make sure I'm not like in the red for the whole song, but that feels just about right. That snare. So this is what when I talk about, I've talked about this recently somewhere. Sometimes, you know, you, you want a certain sound on your snare drum, but you don't actually get it until mastering when the snare is just peeking above the mix and that slimiter goes wham and says, no, you don't. But it does it in a way that just makes it, hmm, makes it nice. Uh, what's up, Bruce Dickert? Um, I I do a lot of mastering on headphones because mastering is just so critical. Um, I know my room for mixing, but it's not the most, well, this is a new room too. These never change, right? I could do this anywhere and have similar sound, right? And these just are, are they're accurate enough. Um, so yeah, I check a lot of mastering here. I'll listen on my mains um, and do some basic stuff on the mains, but yeah, mastering, I ended up doing a lot here. And I heard, like I, I wanted these headphones. I got these like seven, eight years ago, nine years ago, maybe 10. Um, and I was thinking about getting them anyway. And then I saw several different mastering engineers that I know or heard of would use these a lot too. So I said, okay, I'm not a, these guys, you, okay, this is great. Um, Ken says, I want to write like this. And Bretton says that snare just works. It does. It does. Matt Davis. Uh, yes, we're staying in the Nashville area. We're in, technically we're in Brentwood right now. We're moving to Franklin. So we're moving like 12, 15 minutes away. We're not, we're just rotating and downsizing all that fun stuff. Uh, but I will have a studio over the garage. So like an, a bonus room above the garage. That's, I've not done that one before. So like, <laughs> something new to try. Is it as easy to master in Studio One as Pro Tools? It's actually a lot easier because this is an actual mastering suite. So it does things like 
all my tracks here, individual, I have names for each. I can go to digital release and export all of them as WAV files or MP3s with all the things included. Um, I can even put artwork in here and all the different like subs, like songwriter, genre, composer, arranger here, all that stuff. Also, mic if you're mixing and mastering, the mixes will automatically update the mastering file in the mastering session. It's just ridiculously cool. Anyway, um, River System just got my first commercial mastering jobs. Love that. Congrats. That's awesome. That's really great. Seriously. But like we don't celebrate that enough. That's awesome. Good, good work. <laughs> Andreas, what are you asking about that you're not understanding? Okay, I'm not sure I understand it fully yet, but I'll study. But hopefully it's something that will not run out and I'll go buy any license to you. Uh, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I missed it. Is this considered brick wall limiting? Brick wall, yeah, it's considered a brick wall limiter. It's not letting anything by. I set the ceiling to negative one. Um, yeah. All right, let's do, if y'all want to stick around, I can. we can move on. Yes, Case, the thing about the metadata is it only shows up on, I think, MP3s. WAV files don't have metadata. Um, that's the confusing thing. If you export MP3s, it should have the metadata there. Waves do not. So if you, like, upload to DistroKid, it's still going to be. The Record Max in Studio One. Um, I think Johnny answered. It's just, it's just saying how, much, how many hours of recordings you have left on your hard drive. That's all it is. Is it a live cello? I don't know. I think maybe, uh, but I didn't record it. What are your views on Ozone? I think Ozone's cool. I've not used it much. Um, it's a great tool. It's I, I kind of, I just don't get a lot of third party. Like literally I got this limiter because it's fabulous. And then I just used stock EQ with it kind of. Uh, do you have a video on how your mixing was affected by your room change? Um, not specifically, no. Um, I've talked about it a lot, but not like that specifically. John McMillan, I'm glad you're here too. Uh, okay. Breton, you keep poking fun at me, because if you stop poking fun at me, and it won't be as fun. So bring it just on. Just a foolish girl who craves a final bow. This is beautiful. Wow. Let's just listen to it. Just for the record, when I hear songs like this, for whatever reason, maybe it's just the style, um, I feel things, um, which tells me don't mess it up. Don't do too much. Just do a few things and be done with it. to believe. 
without it being close to mine Quiet morning and the sun is on the sidewalk I see the seasons changing and I mark the difference I find myself daydreaming now about the highway I wish you'd come around but hate and leave the distance Gabriel, I don't know if you're here. So this is the artist is Katie Callahan uh, and Gabriel Roman, who's one of my one of my peeps. Um, he produced it, mixed it. It's just that was that is. They've all been great. Um, that song just is beautiful. Um, and Bruce was asking, what is there anything you can do to this? The only thing I did while we were listening, I put on that high pass filter just to catch if there's any extra low in there. Um, and then I took where her vocal is and just brought down that at like two and a half K. Just the part that gets a little spiky when she sings a little louder. It just keeps it smoother. Um, and the only other thing I'm going to try is just put that fat channel with that SSL on there because it just tends to be really smooth sounding, even though it already sounds smooth and the low end is amazing and her voice sounds amazing and I don't want to mess it up or mess with it. Um, I think this SSL might be cool. So let's just do that and then we'll call it a day. like it with the compressor it doesn't it does just a little bit it's not even compressing it's just adding a little bit of warmth and smoothness but that's one i'm just gonna stay hands off it is just gorgeous wonderful gabriel's here uh so gabriel roman here melendez uh he's the producer mastermind mix engineer behind this well done my friend uh mark domzik uh he did all the cello and piano arrangements um that's beautiful man all I had to do was not mess up with the captures, right? That's, I mean, we talk so much. I got I to gotta stop here. I got I to gotta take off the headphones and preach for a second. I talk so much since the very beginning, early, early in Home Studio Corner when I didn't know what I was doing with, like, content. Um, but early on, I started talking about this idea of getting it right at the source. And there's going to be a handful of you who are, like, nodding your head saying, yes, you have. Some of you are rolling your eyes saying, oh, my goodness, is he going to say this again? And then some of you haven't gotten it yet. And so I'm going to keep saying it because there's only a handful of things that are true about music. And one of them is you don't get here without getting it right way, way, way back. You may look at this and say, Joe, you're amazing at mastering. No, not really. You may even look at it and say, Gabriel, you're an amazing producer. Yes, but it was the 
performance and the source material that made it, both the recording quality, but also the song. I mean, if, if, if Katie doesn't write this song, we don't have this moment. If Katie writes a boring song with a boring melody, it doesn't matter that there's beautiful cello on it. It's going to be fairly boring. But you get a good song. Then you get a great singer do a great performance of it. Then you produce it well. And you record the right parts. Then you have the wisdom of a Gabriel to say, I'm going to get my friend to program pian- to play the piano and the cello parts because he can do it in a way that's going to... And then you just keep adding on all this goodness. Then you get to mixing and you're doing the job of just getting out of the way. Just enhancing the good stuff, taking a few frequencies out, adding a little compression, maybe a little reverb, just to make what's there be even better. And then it comes to me for mastering and I have the best job of all. I get to literally just push it up into a limiter sit here and have goosebumps, take away two frequencies and throw a little bit of a bus compressor. And it's amazing. Not because of me. So a big part of what makes you good as a producer engineer is knowing when to get out of the way because you've done all the really hard blood, sweat and tears work of getting it right at the source. I cannot stress that enough. If you focus on that and you, you know, suffer for that, you end up with something like this. Now, you may open up Gabriel's mix session and see a bunch of crazy EQs on that snare to get it to sound just right. Don't care. I'm not hearing that. I'm just hearing uh, a beautiful song. So just let this be. If we're in court, this is exhibit 5,842 of why getting it right at the source is always the best way to go. I think that's a great way to end this live stream. Uh, We've gone through four out of the 12 songs here. Uh, I'm feeling good about that. The process tends to speed up for me as I go because I start to kind of remember, I do a lot of the same things over and over if the song needs it. Um, But... uh, Yeah, this is really great. I'll probably come back and do some more live streams in the future. So if you don't want to miss them, if you're watching this down the road and you may think, man, I wish I could have been there live for this, you need to make sure on your phone, go find, you're probably there already, but make sure you go to Home Studio Corner and hit the little bell thing, turn on notifications for it, make sure your phone lets you notify things from YouTube. And then when I go live, it'll pop up and say, Joe Gilder's live. And if you don't want to see me, great. But if you happen to have a free minute, you can pop in and come hang out and be a part of this. Um... And that's what, I, that's what I want from you. Balake Duncan, good to see you. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I know it's not Balake, but I just saw that Key and Peel thing video uh, yesterday. Anyway, um, not, it's not ringing the bell for me. It's, it's, I, I don't care as much, but I just want you to be able to, to be here if you can be here. I'll take one question from Case, and then I need to run. Uh, okay, I'll take two questions. Uh, bueno Laidly, is it better to have four and a half inch monitors than a seven inch with a seven inch sub or just seven inch monitors alone? I would lean towards the seven inch monitors alone. Because I don't like subwoofers because they tend to bring a lot of problems. Um, and Kay says, I know you don't like trap music in general. It's not your taste. But will you in the future find out of the safe space and try mixing these new genres like trap? Yeah, it's not that I'm not willing to. It's just because I'm a singer-songwriter and into rock and folk, I tend to attract those types of people, right? I just don't run in those circles. Um, but if someone said, hey, I want to hire you to mix my trap song, I'd say, yeah, let's do it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not turning them away. They just haven't shown up. So if you have one, you want to hire me to mix, let's do it. Or if you know somebody, put them in touch with me. Um, but otherwise I'm going to wrap this one up and bid you all adieu. Thank you for hanging out with me and I'll see you around later.